This is Sandra Lafke Carlson um, of the Tualatin Historical Society in Tualatin, Oregon. And this is uh, July 9th, 2020. And I'm here at the Tualatin Heritage Center with Lois Martinazzi. Uh, and we are going to interview Craig Doffel and uh, about his connections to Tualatin, Tualatin history, and Mike Lofton is also here doing the video recording. So, um, Craig, welcome. Thank you for coming. And uh, maybe if you could just start by telling um, where you were born and a little bit about your... Well, I was, I was born in 1950 in Portland. Um, we actually lived in Portland and then in about 52, we moved to Lake Oswego. Uh, my parents worked for the Dickinson family. Uh, jelly and preserves and they were up in uh, Southwest Stevenson Road and then in 57 they moved to 72nd in Benita and they were that actually the first two buildings over there before that all developed they were the early people out there uh, they hired a lot of people from Tualatin in the area uh, my, my mother grew up here my father uh, moved here when he was four years old um, the, uh, uh, he actually graduated in Sherwood High School uh, because there was no high school in Tualatin at the time. Uh, my great-grandfather was Edward Byram. Uh, right here is a picture. And he was the uh, first uh, white settler here in Tualatin. They came in 1856 and they, came from uh, uh, Manchester, England. They came to Boston and there was a brother who stayed there and um, he ran a Babbitt foundry. He made bearings for the woolen mills and they were in Methune, uh, they were in, uh, no not Methune, they were on Methune Street. They were in Northern Massachusetts. Uh, the other brother, Edward, then sailed to uh, around South America to San Francisco and then came by a packet steamer to Portland and then came out and homesteaded. And it was under the Homestead Act where if you could prove the land, uh, I don't remember how many years, uh, it's like four or five, uh, make a profit, then the government would deed you 160 acres. And that acreage is up uh, on Boone's Ferry, south of town. Um, where uh, Ericara, Cayuse Hills would be part of it. The Byram School was part of it. Uh, they butted up against the property for the high school. Uh, so it's, it's in that area. And then they were on both sides of the road of uh, Boone's Ferry. Uh, there, I don't remember the name of the development there that goes down. Uh, so he built a house there. And this, was, this would be the view from the house uh, this, is, this would be basically Cayuse Hills <laughs> subdivision. Uh, this was their barn, and this, is, this would be the east side of Boone's Ferry Road, right up by uh, Ericara. Ericara, I, I don't, never did pronounce that one right. Um, this here is the whole family that was around here. Uh, this would be Edward. Um, oh, down, Craig. Oh, down, I'm sorry, okay. Uh, this would be Joe, which would be my great-grandfather. This is his brother, John. Um, this is Ella and Addie. Uh, and he gets the, the names run together. Uh, John, uh, during, uh, in the 1880s, there was a gold or silver strike in Idaho. And they sort of shut the farm down and went over and they were, they, they were merchants. They opened the dry goods. So they sold the picks and the shovels and they're the people that made the money in those days. It wasn't the miners. Uh, it was whoever was selling to them. Uh, and then family lore has it that um, uh, Joseph? Yeah, well, yeah, this, this is later. Uh, Joseph, 
they, they, had, they had become friends with the Nez Perce Indians and they, they had no problems. And the, the family lore is uh, uh, she would bake pies and leave them out using the native berries. And they would give them to them. So uh, Joe, uh, Grandpa Joe, wandered off. And he was like seven years old at the time. Uh, and two days they looked for him and they couldn't find him. And so they're sort of saying, well, you know, it ain't looking good. And uh, Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce came right again and uh, had him on his horse. And they had found him and they knew who he was. And uh, so they brought him back. So uh, that's family lore. Uh, yeah, but my, well, my, my grandmother wouldn't have been born. I wouldn't be here. So, so uh, then, uh, well, this is this is the the Zeke Eddy house, and this used this stands stood where the McDonald's is on Boone's Ferry Road, uh, right at the end of Twalton Sherwood Road in the old days, where it came down to sort of split in a fork. Uh, it was right across the street. Uh, Zeke's wife died, and he, they were childless. And my grandparents had just gotten married, and this is in 18, uh, 1916, after Ella died. He gave, it to, uh, he gave the house to his only uh, niece, which was my grandmother. And uh, this is where my, uh, my folks, my mother grew up, and uh, her brother, who... Uh, passed away of a heart, heart condition when he was 21. Uh, so, and then this house was moved to uh, um, up on Avery and it still stands there. Uh, this says it's a two story and I think they must mean it put a basement in it because I've been by and I, I, I did it, I, as far as I know, they didn't raise it up. So I think maybe they put it on, on, a, on, a, on a basement. Uh, Let's see, what am I here? Well, okay, so here is the original. This is, this house here is the original Byram house. And in the, let's see, about 55 or 56, there was a remodel done, it was expanded uh, because uh, Grandpa, Grandpa Joe died in 57, uh, and, I, and by then the house had been changed some. Uh, this basically is known as the Dickinson place because uh, it's, it's where Eric Kerr is. Uh, and that's, that would be across, that would be on the west side of Boone's Ferry from the barn. Uh, and how is Dorothy related? Oh, Dorothy, uh, Dorothy Dickinson was uh, my grandma's um, it, it, there were three daughters, uh, Gladys, Dorothy, and Melba Byron. Oh, right here, yeah. There's, there's the three daughters. This is my grandmother, uh, Gladys. This is Dorothy, and this is Melba. Uh, Melba uh, went to Oregon and uh, became a, uh, got a teacher. Uh, she married a man who uh, had been gassed in World War I, and he died in the 30s. And then, uh, uh, I think he died in 37. And it was the effects of the mustard gas that was used in the war. Uh, was buried here in Winona because times were tight. And uh, uh, actually, actually uh, Zeke Eddy that had the house, he swapped five acres, the Winona Cemetery, he owned that property, but he had five acres. Somebody else had five acres, and he said, I'll give you this five acres for the cemetery if I can have that five acres who was gonna donate the cemetery. And it was sort of adjacent to his, but it was a little farther out of town. So that's how Winona Cemetery basically uh, was put in where it is. Um, and then the Winona, I know, is that was the first person that was buried there. That was her name, and she was a child, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah wasn't she uh, J.R.C. Thompson's daughter? Young daughter. Thompson's daughter. J.R.C. Thompson's daughter. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I know that's where the Winona yeah. came from, was, was the first person that was interred there. 
Uh, we go there Memorial Day, we, we sort of take care of about 26 graves now. And uh, uh, growing up, uh, Memorial Day was decoration day, and that was to uh, go to the cemetery and make sure you took care of everybody. Hey, Dorothy. It, Do Dorothy's story. Oh, oh, Dorothy. Well, okay, so Dorothy was the second. She married Walt Dickinson, uh, senior, and Grandma Dickinson was up on Stevenson Road. Up in, in that time, it's Portland now. It was Oswego in those days. Uh, up off, up off Boone's Ferry, uh, Stevenson goes up, goes up to Arnold Creek, and, and goes into where Jackson High School goes in. Uh, they, uh, Grandma Dickinson, had been starting making jellies in 1897, the same year that Smuckers started back in Oroville, Ohio, and uh, they. They were hit, and uh, they, the the milk people delivered them, you know, and it was just sort of this thing. Well, it got going, and then they finally built a factory up there. Um, my father went to work for him after World War II. At the end of the war, uh, he went to work at the at the jelly factory, and eventually became the general manager. And then, like I said, in '57, they moved over to Benita Road. And uh, they, they, uh, they hired a lot of local people, uh, Margaret Saggart, Saggart Street, uh, Ed Waker, uh, the Waker place out uh, at 100, uh, by Edel's Bus Barn, um, uh, Orville Nyberg, uh, which is, everybody knows the Nybergs. Uh, we called them Red. Uh, uh, I'm just, I don't, I don't remember all the names, uh, but, it was all it was all local, uh, so they moved over to Tigard, and uh, I grew up around the jelly business. I was I was I, you give me a box and I could make it a spaceship. You know, just uh, uh, in the old days, you you played with what you had. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, I. Ended up once. Once I was 16, I was driving truck and delivering packages. And once I was 18, I had my commercial chauffeur's license. Got that the day I turned 18, and from that day on, uh, uh, the Dickinsons, uh, uh, Walt and uh, Dorothy, had uh, stepped back. Uh, so their son Walter Jr. and Rodney uh, were there. Uh, my mother worked as uh, basically she ran the shipping and uh, office part of the cannery of the plant. Uh, they had an office downtown that did the billing and stuff like that. Uh, so they they were the first building over there uh, across the street was General Chain Bar and General Bumper, and they uh, they made uh, chainsaw bars for McCullough. Uh, and they actually invented the, the, the ro little roller tip on the chainsaw it was done by General, General Barr. And uh, they were uh, right across the street and then uh, it was 7325 uh, uh, Benita Road. Uh, in fact, when it was 57, it was called Red Rock Road. And about two years later, they changed it to Benita. I uh, don't know why, but... Uh, and Craig, were the, the fruit uh, oh, the fruit. The, the, the fruit was all all right here out of the valley. I mean, it was we, we had a receiving station in Woodburn. Uh, yeah, once I was 18, that's what I did. I got to spend my summers making three, four loads a day, uh, either hauling it into cold storage or bringing it back to Tigard. Because uh, 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 they start picking in the morning, uh, so you don't go to work until noon because they're not going to bring anything in until noon or and then they'll be there till nine o'clock at night. You know, they'll bring two loads a day, three loads a day, and you got to get it refrigerated right away or it's going to just rot. Uh, so so either uh, bulk blast freeze it or bring it back and get it in a chiller and then process it. And, uh, so that, that, I mean, that was, that was my summers once I was 18. And uh, once I was 16, we used to do, we used to do uh, gift packages. Uh, and, uh, the Dickinsons at one time uh, supplied all the jelly to Harry and David. Uh, that, that was a huge account. Uh, they had stuff with uh, uh, Kraft Foods, or uh, you know, yeah, it was Kraft Foods. Uh, 
And I would make four loads a day. I had a, a panel band, and once I was 16, at Christmas time, four loads a day to the post office in Tigard, put the packages on the, on the deal, and uh, they would actually, in those days, they would weigh them and tape them. And uh, on the third load, they'd give me a slip for the last load yesterday and the first three loads today. And then the, when I took the fourth load back, I had to have a check to cover the postage. And, I, and in, in those days, I mean, it was like 1,000, 2,000, and going, you know, it was, uh, and they, they hired, that's, this is, at Christmas, they would hire local women just uh, to pick up the slack. Because uh, there was no styrofoam. All the boxes were put together. They had little cardboard inserts that kept the jars from smashing and breaking and everything. And then, uh, actually, the post office got so bad and broke so many packages, uh, this, this little outfit came out of Seattle, Washington. And they had a very limited thing. And you could only ship so many packages to such an address, and it was only these states and stuff. But they drove a brown truck, and the guys always ran. And after about four years, we didn't go to the post office anymore because UPS didn't break them. And, and it, it, was, it was bad. Uh, the post office, I, you know, it, it was it was the old joke, you know, uh, would you stamp this one fragile? Yeah, like that, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's I I've worked with UPS since they they started in Seattle as uh, running around uh, uh, courier service for the stock exchange up there, and uh, for lawyers and stuff like that, and then they be, become UPS, and um, they're pretty good at what they do, so. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I got going. I got going. This is actually this is actually a picture of my dad. That's Fred Doffel. Uh, this is down at Newport at my grandparents' house. Uh, after before Donald passed away, it was sort of recommended that maybe he'd be better at sea level, so they moved. This yeah, this is this is my grandfather. Uh, and this is Donald, that maybe he'd better uh, be better at uh, sea level, so they moved to the coast. Um, Ed Blank was the uh, proprietor of the Tualatin Dairy. Uh, that barn still stands um, over on Tonka Street. Uh, and the last time I was by, it was I think I think it was a rental outfit. Uh, he actually put the first barn in Washington County. They had a cement self-washing floor where you could um, milk the cows and uh, if they had to relieve themselves or stuff, you could just wash it down and out she goes out the door. But it was the first uh, milking parlor that had a cement floor in Washington County. Uh, and as I said, the barn still stands, so it must have been built fairly well. Uh, another local lore is uh, the Eatles that ran the buses for uh, Tiger High School. For, there, there was no toilet in high school. Uh, but the Tiger School District, they had a bus barn out about 122nd and uh, Toilet and Sherwood Road now. Uh, it's been replaced by a big uh, tilled up concrete building, about 200,000 square feet, it looks like. Uh, so, Lore has it that they were uh, during, they might have been moonshiners. And uh, my grandfather had the milk route, and my mother remembers uh, being told to sit on this crate and just stay there as the sheriff comes up and is talking to old Ed Blank. And she remembers there was jars of clear liquid, and it didn't look like milk. <laughs> and uh, it was, I've got some old milk ledgers and it's like somebody's got here and then they got one over here and said, okay, that's the milk and I think that's the moonshine. And, uh, but I mean, it was prohibition, so. Bottle, some of the bottle would look like. Well, it, it had a black cat that was lifting its leg. And uh, my mother told me it was uh, panther urine. <laughs> that's what they called it. So, so uh, it's, 
It's, uh, and it is not I tell, it's Edel. It's Edel. It's like everybody keeps talking about the I tell industrial park. And I go, no. <laughs> so uh, let me see here. Oh, this, 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 this would be, this would be, this is the Dickinson. This is Walt Sr. and Dorothy, and then Walt Jr. and Rodney. Uh, Walt Jr. was a P-38 pilot in World War II, and uh, actually was shot down uh, in the Pacific. He flew, he flew photo recon, and um, so he was evading capture, and he, he never really spoke about it, uh, but he ran into some friendly native islanders, and they said, don't go that way, because that's where the Japanese are. And they hit him out for about three or four days and then got him back uh, behind the American lines. So uh, now my, my grandfather, my great grandfather, Edward, uh, was, had been a printer by trade. And uh, he believed in education. And this is the school that was built by him and John Sweet. Uh, this is the first grade school here in Tualatin. Uh, they hired a headmaster who actually stayed at the house with them as part of the deal. He actually then left and went and became the uh, dean, president, whatever, uh, of uh, Willamette University in Salem. But uh, this, this, this is the school. My grandmother, uh, Elizabeth, went uh, before... They, um, she went to school in Oregon City. So she'd get on a horse on Monday and ride over and stay with her uncle. And then she'd come back on Friday and spend the weekends here. So basically she rode down 205. And, uh, she, she had talked about uh, during low water, uh, going out and walking around the, the lip of the falls when the river was down. Uh, that was a daring thing to do in the day. Uh, but she was going to be a senior when they got the, the high school started. And her dad said, you're going to graduate from Tualatin. You're not going to go. And she wanted to stay in Oregon City, actually, because uh, I mean, she'd been there the whole time. But uh, so she graduated uh, from, from there. And this is, this is a copy of the... Uh, it's not a copy, it's an original. Oh, it's original of... Um, the yearbook of uh, 1915. And uh, uh, so it was called the Tuala. And it, uh, Tualatin Confectionery, uh, it, uh, it's interesting reading. West Falls Cash Grocery, uh, teachers' photos, fire insurance. Uh, so, and then his brother married Westfall. Oh yes, yes. Then I've got a, a copy of the next year also, the sixteen. So, some of this stuff has to be figured out where it needs to go. So, uh, and then here are these are actually this is the nineteen fifteen graduating class of uh, Holton High School, which was the first year. Uh, and then, let's see. Names on the back of the picture. Oh, well, okay. And then this is, this is Dorothy's class. And this, this is Melba Byron's uh, class. Uh, uh, now this, oh, this is, okay. This is, oh, Lawrence, Massachusetts. That's where it was. This is Fred Byron. This was Edward's brother. He's the one that stayed in uh, Lawrence, Massachusetts, and was uh, a, uh, uh, they made Babbitt bearings. They poured, they poured centered tin, stuff like that, uh, before he had ball bearings. So he had all the mills back there. And Lawrence is famous for, uh, it was called the Bread and Roses Strike. It was a, a very famous, uh, uh, well, was, I guess I guess it was it was sweatshop. Uh, they they had all these girls that worked there, 
they lived on the top floor and then they worked on the three down. Uh, I, I went back to uh, Lawrence because I had to be in Boston on business and we went uh, and I, I had, I, well, I actually, I had this uh, Methune Street and I went to that address. Uh, they actually said, well, that's where the hospital is now, but there's a huge mill just down the block and it's a state park. And it's where the women went on strike uh, for better wages. And it was, it was sort of ugly uh, because they were sick of the cops on, on 15 year old girls. Um, so, but they actually prevailed and working conditions improved. So um, I went and the state park was open and I was talking to the ranger and uh, I said, where's the East Canal? And he said, on the east side of town. And I said, well, tell me where that is. Because I have a letter from uh, John Byram, not John, um, uh, oh, no, I'm sorry, Fred's son, uh, that they, he had gone around the bend and uh, had been recluse and he left a note and said, you'll find me in the East Canal. And he went and he, and he jumped in the river and drowned himself. Well, the, the Methune River, they've, uh, they put in the, the granite blocks to make the spillway and they back it up. And they back it up about 10 feet and then they ran that water through turbines to run the loops. And that was, it was all water powered mill and it was basically free energy. Uh, and so I we went, so when I was asking, I, I had, well, asked where the cemetery was and he said, well, the Catholic one's there. And I said, no, nah, ain't gonna go that way. Uh, and he said, well, the pioneer one's up there. So we went up and I found it. And we spent an hour, hour and a half walking around the cemetery looking and finally said, now nah, this is they're not finding any tombstones. There's no, there's no record, you know, that tells you where the plots are. And I'm talking to my wife and I have to look over her shoulder and I go, you gotta be kidding me. Cause uh, if you've been to Winona Cemetery and if you know where the Byram plot is, there is a big stone, uh, oh, it's yay by yay by yay. And just all it says is Byron. I'm looking over her shoulder, I see Byron. And I go, that's the same stone that we've got in Tolleton, Oregon. And it looks identical. And uh, I mean, I would, I would swear that you moved that one back there. And it's, that's, that's how, that, I guess that's how they did it in England. So that's how they did it. Uh, here, you know, and it's funny, it's in two parts of the family, and I, uh, we had walked around there for an hour and a half, going up and down, reading headstones and stuff, and I just happened to turn around and just looking over her shoulder. So, so after he committed suicide, he, uh, he, uh, his son took over. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Fred is the son, and James was the father. That's, that's, that, I, I get it backwards there. Then uh, this is my, this is Joseph Byram and this is Jessie. And uh, she died in 1926. And to be honest, the building we're sitting in here today was not quite finished, but the first function was her funeral that was held here. She was a uh, photographer too, which is where all the pictures came. Yeah. Then um, I, got a, a, I got a bunch of stuff of the Oregon, the Grange, the Order of the Grange, and the National, the Dues. Um, the Grange was huge to farmers. Um, and they put out animal husbandry booklets. Originally, they were trying to increase the output of, of the farm. Then uh, I've, I've come across these, um, the, the Oregon Pioneer Association, 1905. So he had to be a pioneer to join it. And this is the 33rd annual reunion. Um, I'm just trying to see what, the, uh, what town it was. 
Oh, corner Sixth and Morrison Street. Okay, so it's in Portland. <laughs> uh, then I, I think everybody knows West Lynn. Uh, they were known for their Ch Ch Chautauqua, which was uh, a get together. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, you, you, you had talks, you had picnic, you had ball games. Uh, 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 this I thought was interesting because this is, uh, this is the 1905 Lewis and Clark Exposition. This is uh, was uh, down in Mox Bottom. It was uh, 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 down below uh, where the Mon Montgomery Wards building is, which is. Uh, uh, Let me just say something. We've actually got a whole postcard book of the that. Oh, so, yeah. Ex exhibition. I just, I just thought this was interesting because I think everybody that's ever been to Seaside, Oregon knows where that house is. And it's right on the uh, right on the boardwalk, right on the uh, turnaround. It's got the stone front on it. And this uh, this uh, doesn't say this is a postcard, but uh, they like to go to the beach. Uh, but I, I this is the old boardwalk, and I I've driven by that one. <laughs> I, yeah. We've got a picture of Ellen standing in front of that. We have, uh, we have, uh, up in Canby is where I'm living now, is the uh, Western Display of Fireworks. And I, when I was 18, uh, I had joined the volunteer fire department in Lake Oswego. And uh, the next summer, they were going to send me to pyrotechnic school, and I would be shooting fireworks. Uh, uh, they used to launch them from the Lake Grove Swim Park and there's a little island out off there and they launched them out there over the lake. Uh, but I happened to be able to get a job working on a charter boat uh, fishing out of Newport and there was way more money in that than there was shooting fireworks for free so I never got my pyrotechnic license. But I uh, met a fellow in Canby who did and then uh, uh, I still had some old fire department turnouts and stuff and I didn't like what he was wearing so I, I gave him to Huey and says, hey, put this jacket on and get yourself covered up in case something goes wrong here. Uh, because I was a fire inspector for the city of Gresham uh, the year that somebody shot a firework. They had the tarp open. They used to launch them at the high school grounds right in downtown Gresham. And they had the tarp open and somebody shot a Roman candle in there and they set off the whole uh, uh, magazine. And you were running every which way because stuff was flying. Um, so I helped Hugh Boyle shoot that show for oh five or six years. And, uh, and I remember walking by that house. And so that's sort of basically where we went out. Uh, so, so I did get to play with fireworks eventually. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a fun time. Uh, you gotta be careful. But uh, so then I had, uh, I, actually went down to fire science school at Chemeketa Community College and then I was hired by Tualatin uh, Fire before it was Tualatin Valley, just when it was TRFPD number 62 and it was Tualatin, Tigard, Sherwood, uh, King City, uh, about 100 square miles we took care of. Uh, then I had left there and I'd gone to Gresham and then I, and I ended up going to work with my folks in the jelly factory. So. The jelly business. So, Craig, what was your job at the, the fire department? Well, I started as firefighter, riding tailboard, okay. and you know, uh, take, uh, the, taking the hydrant and running a hose. And uh, for a couple of years, I moved up to engineer, and then I had, uh, I was uh, number one on the list to make lieutenant. But when uh, we, I was sitting there, but then I had a chance to go into fire inspection, so I did that. So. Yeah, I was, uh, this, this is, uh, I got hired on when they opened the Sherwood Station. Uh, they had built Sherwood and King City, and uh, uh, July 1st of 1971, I went to work uh, with uh, Dave Myers, uh, he was the local guy. Uh, Jerry Hess was my cousin, uh, he uh, used to live across the street from the old fire station, and then 
he uh, had been in the army and had come back and uh, was working. Uh, his folks uh, worked at, both of them worked at the cement plant. Uh, his mother was a head chemist. They had to check all the batches. And, you know, the cement plant was in Oswego. It's, uh, oh, it's down where the brewery is now. <laughs> they tore it down. Uh, but she was, she was the, the she was a head chemist. Yeah, but she was related to your father and that they were all Oh yeah, that was it was it was my aunt. That was my, my father's my so father. She, she was born and raised here too in Twelves. Mm. No, no. Didn't they? No, they were born in Indiana. They came they came out from Indianapolis. Oh, okay. Uh, dad was four, so That's Emma right. would have been I think she was four years older. So they uh they came out on the train. But they lived here in Twelve. Uh they lived here in Twelve. Oh, uh actually uh where the Twelve City Hall is uh, was their old house. Uh, and when they moved out, the Tualatin Fire District bought it, and that became uh, the headquarters office. Uh, it was right there, just, just past the apartments as you come from Tigard uh, on the left. And then actually the city bought it from the fire department, and then they knocked it down and put the library, and uh, it's it that piece of property. Uh, and they had the station there, uh, the, they put the office in there, and then in the back they put an addition on, and that was the dispatch center. So you had uh, the, the, the dispatcher was sitting there. Uh, he used to be in the old toilet and fire station, just sitting in the front desk, and sat right there. Well, then they, they moved him over, and you had, you had one guy per shift uh, as dispatch, and so they had to coordinate the vacation. There was no spares. Uh, and you were there 24 hours a day by yourself, uh, or by yourself at night. During the day, you know, there might, the chiefs would be around and you'd have a little bit, but uh, uh, so it was, it was, it was uh, oh, Floyd Burning, uh, Captain Burning, uh, Dutch Maxwell, Marion Maxwell. Uh, he, he, they were uh, um, Guy Skull, uh, Gordon Scott. Uh, like I said, Dave Myers, uh, the, the, the uh, oh, Cliff Floyd. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we go back, these are, the, these are the guys that, they started the hose wagon. And actually, Twilight and Fire District started with, they had hydrants and they had a hose reel and it was man pulled. It, you know, big old high wheel, and you just run down the street, hook the hose to the hydrant, and uh, try and, you know, you might not save that house, but you might save the next two down the street. And uh, then they, then they, they got a, a uh, old Federal they had uh, that uh, was a hose, that was an engine, uh, and then it went from there. And uh, uh, Bill Barngrover, they hired him, and, and he, he stayed there till 65, and then he retired, and they brought in Russ Washburn, and then uh, I, all, all those years growing up, uh, I remember Twalton being 362 people, and it was, you know, it was just a little spot on the map. <laughs> it was just this little downtown down here. Uh, the town ran out by the time we got to the country club. That was in the sticks. Uh, this 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 section right around here by the police station. This was the last buildup. Uh, uh, oh, who's the insurance guy over there? Uh, Congregational church? No, 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 no. Uh, who sold? Oh, he insurance. sold insurance out of his house. Insurance. Uh, uh, I, I can't remember. Also flooded down here. Huh? It flooded. Down it here. flooded down here. That's that's here. why my that's why my family actually. They took the high land south of town because they had sort of figured out this could flood down here, and it did a few times. I we I worked for the fire department when it flooded. Uh, that must have been seventy two or three when uh, uh, we were we were sandbagging Joe Grulick's apartments mm -hmm. over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Joe Joe was a, a chief in the fire department. He was a captain when I first met him. And then he became a chief, and he was fire marshal. And he had some apartments on Boone's Ferry, and uh, we were out there sandbagging, trying to keep the water out, just because you know he, we worked with him, and that was his side deal was renting apartments. Uh, so 
the, well, the Tualatin Fire Station flooded, is that the old fire station stood basically, um, I, the Grange is still there. Yeah. So it was just, just adjacent, it's a parking lot now, I think. Uh, but it was just uh, be south of, of the Grange building. Uh, right there in downtown. Well, yeah. I want to remind you, of, maybe you don't know this, that Edward Byron <clears throat> was the first uh, chaplain at Winona Grange. Oh, was he? And, okay. Yes, and he, he kept that um, office until he died. Okay, because I I, I, I I got the whole Grange thing there, and I, 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 and I, I, I ran through this stuff, and I, I, I know he was in the Grange, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's interesting, because it's, it's got animal husbandry. It's got bee pollination. There were, there were pamphlets they put out to yeah. just to. Uh, well, and you have we have the uh, the loan that he took out that Edward took yeah, out. Ed, Edward place. Edward Edward would mortgage 160 acres every year to buy his seed to put his grain crop in, and he'd borrow 75 to 100 dollars. At six percent interest, wow. and he was every year. It was the same people. It was the Frank family, and they had a homestead, some land down towards Wilsonville, uh, and they were they were storekeepers. And it's 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 the Frank of Iron Frank. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. It was it was it was Aaron Frank. They've got those guys. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so when my folks had where Cayuse Hills is, I've got the abstracted deed that lists every mortgage and every completion. For, and you just go every year, and it's always the same people borrowing the same amount of money. And he said, like, 160 acres for 75 bucks, that's a pretty good deal if the guy defaults on it. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, Oh. oh, then this is the blank house. And I, for, as you go up Boone's Ferry, just as you leave downtown, and the road takes a little turn to the right, you start up that hill, there are some apartments there on the left. And that, that was the blank um, house. And that was, that was Grandma Blank's property. That was, uh, I don't know how many acres it was. I know it was over 40. Uh, but that was where the Tualatin Dairy was. And that was the, that was the dairy land there. That's where they ran the cattle. Uh, Did you show this? No. Oh, yeah, this, 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 is, this is the blank side of the family. Uh, this is my grandfather, Edward. Uh, this is Grandma Blank. That's his brother, uh, Al. And this is Gordon. Uh, commonly called shrimp, um, but it's not ever blankets. Um, but what's what's dad's name? Is it Edward? Edward Blank. Oh no, but who's, who's his dad? Um, don't ask me. <laughs> you, you, you just you just made me go blank. August. August. Perhaps. August. August Blank. Old man Blank. Gus Blank. He, he was a janitor. Jan he was a janitor at the school. I remember that very And uh, his mother used to. My mother, there. my mother would. Uh, she had her own desk in the boiler room. Before she was old enough. To go Before school. she was old enough to go to school, but she, she she'd go there and she'd study and she'd be with her grandpa, and it was August Blank. Uh, they came out from uh, Frankfurt, South Dakota. Because uh, my grandfather, uh, I got his graduation uh, papers from Frankfurt. I've done a little Google, and Frankfurt is uh, sort of like Donald. It's about one square mile, just house. There's there's a railroad line. There's a grain elevator. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just like Donald. Uh, then uh, I didn't bring it. I've got a picture of a... Oh, I th she's, my, my granddad was, was about 1897, 98. Uh, it's a, it's a threshing bee and it's a McCormick reaper where you, you hand scythe the, the grain 
and then you put it in the sheave, and then you put her through the, the thrashing machine, and it took the wheat from the chaff and, and kept the wheat and spit everything out. It's a huge old uh, belt driven, uh, and it, it was lunchtime. And uh, you've heard there's, it took about 20 people to run the thing, and they're all sitting there uh, having their picture took in front of it. With their wives uh, and babies. Yeah, and my, my granddad, he's about, he's about two years old sitting there on the ground. Uh, but but that's, uh, I mean, that was, they were farmers. Everybody was farmers. Uh, I remember my mom uh, during the depression. Um, she said, we were never hungry. She said, you know, we, we, we canned, uh, we, we, we had a, a, a hog or a, or a cow you could slaughter. Uh, we put up fruit, we put up vegetables, but there wasn't a nickel to buy a new pair of shoes. Uh, it was it was hard scrabble. He said, you know, people in the city were hungry. Uh, you know, the farm people, no problem. Um, I remember uh, uh, we, we spent time at Wakers all the time, uh, especially after the Columbus Day storm, because uh, they had a lot of cedar and it blew down and they had an old uh, uh, bandsaw uh, that ran off a McCormick uh, Deering tractor. It was a tractor you couldn't take down the highway because it had steel it had steel lugs like this that you put it on asphalt it just dig a hole it was it was good for uh for working in the onion flats uh because what what they call the wildlife refuge now we used to call the swath <laughs> and, and it was all it was all onion flat uh all the way out to sherwood uh and uh well sipole uh, sipole in italian is onion uh, uh, the, uh, so that, all that bottom land out there that flooded every year, uh, uh, we call it a beaver dam because it, it got recharged with the flood and bring it on. It, I mean, it was just wonderful soil. And, uh, and, uh, down in Salem, down where the old Sa Salem drive in there on 99 had the same thing. They used to. Uh, take the Pudding River and pump it the wrong way and then flood that thing and just and then that was all onion uh, So I, I can remember going out on Herman Road and uh, they had boxcars I'd go play on the boxcars on the weekend Climb on them and let the brake loose and never moved. It was totally flat Tell them um, about Langdon and the airport that was out there. Oh Langdon that, and the airplane. Well Harold uh, Harold Langdon uh, local guy. Uh, he took my mother for a ride in a 1929, 20, 1927 um, biplane. And my grandmother would have died. Uh, my grandmother finally flew to Hawaii and back once. She, she wasn't in aviation, but uh, she never knew. That, and it put the bug in my mother. My mother became a pilot in the 60s. And then my father also, uh, myself. Uh, it, uh, they, they used to land basically uh, where the grocery store is, uh, right on, right on Tall and Sherwood. It was just an old, big old field, and they used it as an airport. Uh, we went to Wagers after uh, Ed, Ed bought a, a plane, and we had a plane. We put a runway on that 38 acres down there, uh, and now it floods during, you know, it, 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 it's, it's gone back to its native land. Uh, but, uh, you know, ha half of Waker's place is underwater now, or at least during the winter. Um, and then Columbus Day came in 62 and took all these trees down. Uh, my dad and Ed, uh, we, they fenced and cross-fenced the place and uh, uh, started running sheep and we raised pigs. Uh, we used to go to the grocery store and pick up all the old uh, vegetables about every other day, just in 55 gallon drums. And then we slop the hogs and, uh, you know, just build a fire and uh, a, a, a water heater uh, cut in half and uh, put some water in there and start cooking the vegetables and throwing everything in there. And, and uh, hogs loved it. And they got big and fat. And then they went to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 it is, uh, it, it, I just remember talking to folks and just, uh, like I said, they, they had fun. Uh, it, it wasn't, uh, it, the city folks suffered 
in the Depression more than the country folks did. Uh, had a lot of guys in Tualatin. Uh, they worked in the shipyards during the war. And uh, they, because of that, uh, my grandfather was a painter. He had, he had gone down to uh, California and worked on the uh, uh, Bay Bridge. And uh, so was that Carl? That was Carl. Yeah. He was he was a painter on the uh, on the Bay Bridge, and then came back. And it was it was it, he moved down there like a year. And he had a um, brother down there. Uh, yeah, there was other Doffels down there. And so he stayed with them. Uh, then he came back and he went to work for Henry Kaiser down on Swan Island, and he was a painter there during the war. Well, all these guys uh, that worked in the shipyards got an a, a ration card. They got all the gasoline they wanted because they were essential workers. Well, they were smart enough that they carpooled. And so only one guy burnt the gas, and then they were farmers here on the weekend uh, you know, I mean, they were working the farm at night and working during the day at the shipyard. Well, they were essential to keep the the food growing. So they, none of them ran out of gas. Other people couldn't get any gas, but because you either had it for the farm or you had it because you were working in the shipyards. Because, uh, see, Kaiser, see, he built 50 uh, aircraft carriers in Vancouver, and then they built Liberty ships at Swan Island. Uh, so they were the little baby escort carriers that mainly they used them in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And they, uh, a lot of it was just, they hauled planes to uh, uh, Europe. Instead of flying them across, you put them on the aircraft carrier and just take them and then crane them back off. But uh, there were 50 of those built over on the old, uh, if you got Marine Drive, you look and you can see where the, the, the ways were, where they slid them in sideways. Okay, in the Columbia. Glenmore Farms. Start from Glenmore Columbia. Farms? Um, that's our jelly business. Let's start with, start with it's, the house. It's, start with it's, the house. it's named after uh, the Byram house. Uh, Edward Byram uh, announced the w wedding of his daughter Elis Gladys Elizabeth to Edward Blank at his Glenmore farm in Tualatin, Oregon. So that's what he called the place. So when we went in business for ourselves, that's the name my mother picked. And uh, we still we still sell jelly here. <laughs> uh, so and the barn is Glenmore Farms. Yeah, the the, the 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 barn was was part of Glenmore Farms. That was that was the name for the 160 acre homestead. So uh, that is the best jam. Oh. <laughs> then then there's this interesting history here. I think we need to touch on this. This is. Uh, this is sort of unknown documentation, but these are, this is Chinese person, lived here in Tualatin, and they, they came um, originally, uh, the Chinese dug the canal from the Tualatin to create Lake Oswego. Uh, then they also went over to John Day, and actually, actually south of John Day, uh, John Day has the Cam Wa Chang uh, apothecary, uh, which is a Chinese apothecary. Uh, there were what they called Chinese walls, and there's stones from this to this that was from the mining and they had to move it out of the way. So these Chinese laborers, uh, I, done some, they're like 15 feet wide and 15 feet high. They're tapered up and they're all hand stacked. And there's like 20 acres of them. The and whole it's, group of those men were here. They, they were, were here. here and yeah. one night they all disappeared. Yeah. They, all, one stayed and they, all the rest of them disappeared and they all moved over to to Central My Oregon, and yeah. the one the one that worked for Zeke Eddy stayed and worked with him his whole life, I think. Was yeah. That, was that old Hing? Yes, that was Hing. Okay. But, but this, this is, some people did some research in this, and these are supposed to be Chinese imperial ropes, according to, I have somebody, I think University of Portland, or not, Portland State. Uh, but that's a family picture of yeah, the family of, of the 
of the wallets and and this, the worst part is we don't know who they are. Yeah, I mean, we, we, so we, we, have, we, have, we have the photos, but we don't have any, any history. Huh. But then um, we've got the photos of the gentleman that did stay here, and then there's old Hame too, but this was yeah. another I, gentleman. I see a picture of Chinese people uh, at the, at the uh, Booth Zeke house. Yeah, well, yeah. That's Zeke, yeah. Zeke had a gentleman to work with it. Yeah. And there's pictures of, of oh, I can't hear you. Oh, oh. Zeke Eddie had a gentleman to work with him. Oh, and he, he's was, he was he was uh, Chinese, and there's pictures of, of that man. Um, then there was Hing was the other gentleman that stayed in town that your mother remembers. Yeah. But this man was younger, and he lived with Zeke Yeti because Zeke's wife Ella or right. Ella died so early uh -huh. that uh, at Ella Byron that this man and he they took care of his home, and oh. um, and so he, they were the only ones that really stayed when all the rest they had built the, the corduroy road. On Boone's oh yeah, the Chinese before they moved oh, yeah. over to oh, Central oh, Oregon. Oh, yeah, did. The, the yeah up up through Durham, up Boone's Ferry, that was that was Cordray, which was logs. slab slab logs. You know, you just laid them down side by side, and that, you know, that was before gravel and macadam and stuff. Uh, my my grandfather had a team uh, that was a team of horses, uh, and he worked on that Cordray Road. And uh, uh, they were they were good pullers. They were I don't know, they weren't percherons, but they were they were a draft team. No, it was that was Ed Ed Byron, oh. Ed, Ed, Ed Blank, Blank. Ed Blank. Okay, it's too many Ed's. Too many bees. <laughs> <laughs> did, Greg, did did the Blanks ever live on the west side of Blues Ferry? No, their 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 place was on the east side. Okay, because and it's my right. Yeah, it's my grandparents had a farm. On the west side of Boone's Ferry. Well, uh, what and, was their name? But I, Lafke. Oh, Lafke. They okay. came in '28, and and I don't know who lived in that house before them. And I thought it was the Blanks. There's a picture of, of the Blank family. I thought they lived. I thought it was on the west side. The Tiedemans. Did you? Were they related to the Tiedemans? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Uh oh. Oh yeah, you are putting me on the spot now. Uh, I got the Westfalls. They're the other ones that are. Well, who's Westfall? Westfall was. Ada Westfall. Ed Blank's brother. Married Ada Westfall. What, what's his name? Ed, Ed, Al. Al. Alfred. Al married Ada Westfall. Yeah. And Roe Westfall was Ada's brother. Yeah. And the picture that's taken that's in the in the police department of the car or the, the truck with the people on it. Hey. Roe's the one standing there on leaning on the hood. Ed's driving, Gladys is the passenger. If you read the little thing that's on the wall, those aren't the right people. <laughs> that's actually his family and the Westfalls. And so... Take your mask down. What? Oh, those people in the Westfalls. Yeah. And um, so that's the group that's in there. Uh, Melba hadn't gotten married. Ada married... Al. Al. Gladys and, and Ed were married. Ro was the little kid. Yeah. But they're all in that picture that's on there. Well, was a photographer, wasn't he? Yeah. He took so many pictures. Well, see, yeah. and, and the other one was his grandmother, uh, great-grandmother, Joe's wife. Yes, Jessie. Jessie took most of the pictures he had of that era. She was the great photographer, so she won't be in a lot of the pictures. Right. Yeah. Because she was the one taking them. But we got, I mean, this is just... Okay. I'd like to see, did, did you, you grow up in Carrollton? Because My parents both came from downtown Portland. Okay. Dad, and mom, dad, mom was Grant, Dad was Lincoln, and I ended up growing up in Colorado because okay. my dad worked for us going with that. Yeah, you know a lot about. The well, I, I, well, I married this man and I knew his mother very well, and oh, yes, and then then for, she's for down to me years. to kind of pass it all on because yeah. Everett was passing away and everything was coming to Barbara. Yeah. And then when Fred had it, and then when. Fred passed, he had put it up. So I went through everything and I sorted through it a bit, but there's just so much. Um, and then I was hoping that we could, I did a, a display at the library um, of the Toilet and Deer. And it was really kind of fun because I had all these in. We've got the old milk bottles and the you know containers, yeah. but there's really no place to put it. So I keep waiting for the time that you know we can 
maybe put it somewhere because it is. It goes back so much, and it goes back to the donation land point. You know, I mean, that, that's, you know, for the West Coast. I mean, that, that's, you know. that's like the stuff in Greenville. I mean, yeah. I've got it here. It doesn't, it, it doesn't really, you know, it's him writing to his dad and just telling him what he's doing. But he's talking about what's going on in Greensville, Idaho, or mm -hmm. Idaho. So I... We're getting the letters coming towards him. But we've got tons of documents and tons of insurance. Really? Tons of, oh, just oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Massive. I mean, I've got eight books. He, he went through them, and that's what he pulled out yesterday. Uh, big, huge books. But then there's boxes. And yeah. my mother, who wrote, the, who wrote the history in 1959, said that uh, the Byrams went to Idaho and they took the Galbert boys with them. Oh, did they? OK. Three, three Galbert boys. And one of them stayed in, in Idaho and married an Indian. Right. Okay, that would be John then. Yeah. That, yeah, that would be John. And he's, he's the one in the, in the picture with the mustache. Looks, oh. like, looks like Wild Bill Hickok. I mean girls. John Galbert. Oh. oh. He went there with him. Yes, Galbert. We've got pictures of Galbert too. We've got, one, we've got, we've got an oh. imitation on it. I've actually got a, a, a picture that was painted by him. With what? Was painted, a picture that was painted by Galbert. It's like a scene. Wow. So, so. <laughs> we, we also have a picture of a... A uh, uh, steam steam ship. Yeah, that that was that was down Newport, and it was always it, it was always hanging there, and I don't know what it is. But, you know. you know, your dad told me that that they lived uh, that uh, your grandfather Carl and that the family lived on the old Galbraith in the Galbraith house, which was just up across the bridge. Okay. And and, and that he was a foreman for a uh, Tilkington nursery. Galbraith was. No, uh, Carl was Carl. Carl, uh, I I know Carl. You know, I, uh, I I'm not born in 1950. Uh, I think, and I don't remember what year he died. I'd have to go out to cemetery and look. Uh, but I remember him. He lived in the little house right, right here at the turn yeah, uh, across from the park, mm -hmm. and it's still there. Little tiny house. Yeah, and I I just looked at it today when he came by. Uh, it's been remodeled. Uh, I can remember the, the garage now has been turned into a, a outbuilding or a house or something. Uh, I can remember going out and listening to Beaver, Raleigh Truett and Beaver baseball games on during the Raleigh middle Truitt, yeah. and uh, listening to the Beavers on the radio. Uh, my, my granddad, uh, at one time he had been uh, sort of the sheriff. He was the night watchman walking around town, rattling the doors, make sure everything was locked. Um, the Carl's wife, Hilda, and he divorced, and so early, early on, early on, and so Hilda was the one that I got to know because Carl was gone. But Hilda, that's until she was ninety. She was a day short of ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. uh, Living out with the Hesses. Just she, she lived uh, with uh, her daughter uh, and son-in-law. Uh, they had 80 acres out by Aurora that he raised Angus. Interesting aside to that was uh, about a week after my grandmother passed, I got a letter from uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton wishing her a happy 100th birthday. And my dad was a little mad. And <laughs> He was going to send it back. He said, she's not 100, she is only 99. So I said, I said, Dad, I think you probably should just let it go. Well, what do you mean? I said, uh, he was sort of stickler for detail. And I said, well, the way I got this figured, the only way they could know she's 100 is it's off the Social Security rolls. So I said, it looks like to me, that maybe she got her Social Security at 61 instead of 62. <laughs> and I said, you know, the government's probably going to want that money back. Uh, you paid that first year that you weren't entitled to, and they're going to want compound interest for 38 years on it. And he goes, hmm, you might be right. <laughs> you know, uh, Archie and Melba Hess, Archie and... Now Archie and uh, Emma. Emma. Emma has. Oh yeah, Melba. 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 Melba it, 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 there are two sides of Hesses in our they're family. They're called Hesses, but they're not related. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, Melba's first. Anyway, Mel they gave my dad a horse. Oh, did they? Yeah, but a darn nice horse. Yeah, dad rode it in a puffish parade for my bit. But uh, yeah, my my aunt uh, uh, Melba married uh, John J. Hess. Uh, she had married, and her first husband had uh, died of the effects of gas from World War One uh, during the Depression. So uh, she remarried after World War II, uh, John Hess, and he uh, was a major in the uh, Air, uh, Air Corps. I uh, served in the South Pacific. Uh, he was a stockbroker. Uh, they had, uh, they actually had a seat on. He, he uh, grew up in New Jersey, went to Princeton, uh, went to work as a runner on Wall Street, uh, and then uh, afterwards came out and uh, had uh, uh, Hessing would fall, and then uh, they hired. Uh, these two guys, and they brought him in. It was called Rippy Inskeep Hess and McFall. Well, Rippy and Inskeep had this little idea, and about they 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 basically created the Clumley Daily Income Fund, which was one of the first daily funds, um, and Wall Street didn't like the way this was going because they thought it was gonna cut into their stocks. And so they had to divest themselves of every bit of that. So they spun Columbia off to Rippey and Inskeep and they, they kept the stock brokerage or they were gonna lose their seat on Wall Street. They were gonna take it away because this was competition to Wall Street and they didn't like the way it was going. But uh, they were one of the first, and, and I remember them uh, telling my folks, to, if you got a little money, let me have it, because I got this little thing, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go. And it did go. <laughs> uh, when, when Gladys and, and Ed would have John over for... Oh, well, yeah. My, my Uncle John, uh, great Uncle John, he had to have a suit, a jacket, and a tie on at dinner every night at the table. Melba insisted on my. That was Melba, and she, she grew up on a farm, but then she became citified. So my, they'd come out to our place, and the first thing my, my mother would do was undo his tie and take his jacket and put it in the closet. And said, now you're in my house, John, you can do whatever you want. He actually, uh, when, uh, he liked scotch. And he liked scotch on the rocks. And he had a, a, a Baccarat crystal glass. And I'm about 11 or 12 years old. He takes me in the kitchen. And he, well, Melba said he had to drink scotch and water. So I was a big enough kid. So I'm sitting there and he, he takes his cutty sark and puts a couple cubes in and some cutty sark and he turns the water on and he goes like this. And uh, not close to the water. Not close to the water. And so from then on, he'd say, Craig, would you get me a scotch and water? So I'd take his glass and I'd go put some ice in it and I'd fill it up with some scotch. And I'd walk in there and my Aunt Melba would never look at me. She never knew what was going on. And I'd turn the water on and I'd go like this. And I'd go back, hand it to him, and he'd say, take a little sip and say, that was, that is the perfect amount of water in this. Well, thank you, Uncle John. I know, know how to do it. So, they, they lived in the West Hills. Uh, up Their house, actually, after they passed, uh, we sort of, sort of got in, uh, Rodney was executive of state, Rodney Dickinson, and uh, we were the only heirs. Uh, Melba had passed about six months before John did, and, the house was up there on the, where the faults are on the West Hills. And it was actually splitting in half. And if you went down to the basement, there was a crack through the middle of the house running from end to end that had opened up to about three inches. And it was getting ready to go down the hill. So uh, he bequeathed his estate, he, he gave some cash donations, and then he left the remainder of his estate to, uh, the uh, Episcopal School in Spokane. 
uh, because he had, uh, how'd he done this? He'd been in New Jersey, then he'd gone to Spokane, he went to school there, then he went back to Princeton. Um, so they ended up as the legacies of the estate and the church thought we were undervaluing the sale of the house because he found somebody to buy it. But I mean, it was a fire sale because it was, it was, you're going to have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to solidify this hill and jack this thing back up. So, and if not, it's going to go down the hill and be nothing. You know, you're, you're going to have a lot. You're going to have a lot you can't build on. Uh, so they, they, they sort of got a little greedy, I guess. <laughs> I hate to say that. But it and said, well, then they finally uh, had somebody come out and look at it. And they says, oh, take it right now. <laughs> Get it out of here. We don't want this thing. <laughs> Is it, it, and I, I happened to be in town one day delivering and I went up on the old street uh, and uh, they had two neighbors across the street. One was a dentist and uh, I stopped, I was looking and I couldn't quite figure out what was wrong because I knew it was the right house. And a guy walks over and he says, you were related to, I said, yeah, I was, I, he was my great uncle. And, and I go, your dad was a dentist. Yeah. I said, I said, you know, I just want to tell you that your dad, uh, they'd get ice up there and the power would go out. Well, he always made sure because they, they were now, you know, stuck, no power, no heat. Because, uh, you know, I had oil heat in those days. And if you didn't have power, you weren't going to have any heat. Uh, so the, they always took care. And I, you know, I said, I just want you to know how much uh, uh, my aunt and uncle appreciated you. Uh, and actually, uh, this is, they, they were gay. And this was way before today. And, uh, but um, they were nice, thoughtful people. Uh, they were well respected. And there's no problem. Uh, but, 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 well, they had, they had what, what had happened? When they we rebuilt the house, they put another story on it. That's why I said, what's different here? I know it's the same house, but there's something different. They'd add another story on what happened. It's still there. It's still there. It's still yeah, there. it's all jacked up. They went in and they stabilized the hill and they had to drive piling. The other uh, there's the there's other, slides all over the West Hills. The only other story that I thought you would enjoy was his mom, Barbara, and brother. Don. Don and Harold Langdon were up at the top of the hill where they lived. Oh. And her, Dawn was in a wheelchair. It, and so Barbara would get on one side of the wheelchair and Her Harold would get on the other side of the wheelchair. They'd jump on and they'd all ride down the hill. Right, yeah, right down. On Dawn's Well, from basically, basically where the old, the old school, uh, that, that was pretty much across the street. The, the blank place was across from the old school. And then when I was there in the fire department, the school had been turned into uh, apartments. And then, and now it was torn down, and now there's apartments on that property. It's one of those Randall, because both of, both of the, where the school is and where the uh, blank house was are both Robert Randall apartments uh, that uh, came in the '70s. Uh, the uh, they had uh, the original grade school was built during the. Uh, uh, <laughs> During the uh, Depression, they built it for $100,000. And there was big contention in town of people who wanted a school and people who were against the school. And uh, there was, uh, uh, the vote went through uh, over the Dickinson family uh, over on Stevenson Road. There was a Dalmatian man, Yugoslavian, Dalmatia. Uh, name is Pete Varan, and he actually built the Dickinson fa uh, fa factory over on Stevenson Road uh, in the 20s. And he had come over from, his father came over to Astoria and got himself a rowboat and a set of Armstrongs. And he fished for three years uh, on the salmon fishery on the Columbia River. And after three years, he had enough money to send for his oldest son, Pete. So they fished for three more years. 
And then Pete, they had enough money to bring the whole family over. So Pete settled up on Stevenson Road and he had a construction shack and he had, oh, three, four acres. Uh, and it's right across from the Stevenson uh, grade school. So during the depression, uh, some bootleggers came by and they wanted him to uh, run whiskey and hide it for them, put a still up there. And he told them to get lost. Well, he was building a new house and he had got married. Uh, so he was building the big house and it had a basement. That's what they wanted to use. And he told them to get lost. So he went to the sheriff. Well, the bootleggers came back and they burned his house down. And his wife died in the fire. And uh, he, was, he was old country. Uh, he never drove. Every Saturday we'd uh, take him down to the, the old uh, farmer's market in Portland. Uh, he'd stock up his supplies. He made his own wine. So as a head of household, you can, as, as, a, as a head of household, you can make wine. As a single man, it's illegal. So the revenuer showed up and told him he had to stop making his wine. And the locals went and told him with shotguns to get off the property because he had gone to the revenuers about the bootleggers and it cost him his wife. And they said, you see that ring in his finger? He's married. And he moved back in the construction shack and he lived there the rest of his life. And uh, we'd, uh, we'd stop by. Well, when they, they needed carpenters, and he was, a, he was a master carpenter. So when they built the original brick school there at uh, Sagart and, and uh, Boone's Ferry, he came and he lived with uh, the Dickinsons. And uh, so then he was a resident of uh, Washington County. So he was eligible. So he was uh, one of the head carpenters on uh, building the grade school. Mm -hmm. He lived there for about a year. Mm -hmm. and then he moved back. Uh, you know, speaking of <clears throat> Your dad told me that uh, one time uh, they told was talking to uh, uh, Joe Byron, Joseph Byron, and somebody said, "Well, we'll put some of the whiskey in in the hay mow. And, and Joe said, "Oh no, you you can't do that." And the other guy says, "Joe, you'd be surprised how much whiskey was in your." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that's it. You know, it's. Uh... I was, I was amazed when Pennsylvania shut the liquor stores during coronavirus because they, they were going to Ohio and they finally were turning them around the border. Okay. It's, I'm going to go. Oh, okay. Um, I have more to there, I will, well, I will, we'll I will tell schedule, one story. We'll have to schedule another session. Okay. Oh, we, we, we I can, can, can bring I, I, got, I got one more. I, I can remember uh, it would be around 1960. Uh, I was able on a Sunday after noon, after he'd been to church, we'd be at the Wagers and I'd get on my bike and I'd ride to Tualatin on Tualatin Sherwood Road. And I, on the way down, I was picking up little stuffy beer bottles, the returnable ones, they were two cent deposit. So I had to find me five of them in the ditch. And I'd go down to the grocery store and I'd buy me a soda pop for 10 cents but trading the bottles in, and then I'd turn around and ride back. Well, that was Boone's Ferry out to 120th. And I can remember many a Sunday being able to ride down there and I wouldn't pass a car on the road either way. And it's hard to believe, if you see the traffic count on 12 Sherwood Road now, that I can remember doing that. And it wasn't that many years ago. <laughs> it's only, it's only. Well, I remember your Aunt Emma. Was she your aunt? Yes. Yeah. Yes, she was. Emma has. She was a dollar. Working at, she was working at the store in Tualatin, the white store. Oh, did she? Okay. And, and there were some railroad guys come in and uh, bought something. And and this kind of scroungy looking guy handed her the money in his hands like that. She had to pick it oh. up. I can remember the look <laughs> on her face. She was not happy. Well, Jerry has, who he was talking about, was in the, the 
fire department with him. Yeah, that, that, that was her son. Yeah. That was her son. Her son. That was Emma's yeah, son. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Hess. Jerry Hess was Emma's was son. Emma's son. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, we get the Hess on both sides, and they're they're not related. But uh, so we got a little German, <laughs> little English, little French. And Dauphel, it's Alsace Lorraine. Oh, Dauphel, yeah. So it's the French part of the time is Germany, part of the time is France. It just oh, depended yeah. on which way the wind blew that year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, actually I had done a little genealogy, and there was one fellow came to Indianapolis, and there's there the last I knew there was less than 200 Dauphels in the oh. in, in that I, I can track down, and it all comes from one guy. And uh, yeah, and Byron. Well, it, that, that's the other lore. That's the other family story. Is uh, when they got on the ship in England, supposedly their name was Byron with an N, as in Lord Byron. Mm -hmm. But he was sort of a rounder, uh, not a good influence. So when they got off in. Uh, Massachusetts, all of a sudden, they had become by rum. Is, is that, that's, that's, yeah, yeah, that is, that is, we had some friends that did some genealogy and she seemed to think that was true. That, oh, so wow. somehow we relate back to Lord Byron, the poet. So there's not the a much poet. Yeah, by rum is yeah. name So. Oh, that's, that's cool. Would you have just a few minutes extra where I could maybe take photos of some of the, sure. the sure. photos that you brought of your family? Or do you need to get going? Well, I can leave him here. You can, well, I can, I can leave him here. Oh. Yeah, I can leave him. I'll just. Oh, yeah, that, okay. She, yeah, she actually got to go to work. So. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Well, thank you so much. Oh, no great. problem. And is it Judy? Judy. Yeah. Judy. Judy. It's so well, contributed. And I'm, are we still painting? What I was thinking is maybe we should do this again. Maybe we've got a big, huge building that we could put that's open that we could put tables out and we could show you a lot of stuff if you really wanted to see stuff this just oh yeah this very little time these were things we could just grab uh -huh. Uh -huh. but there's there's <laughs> huge amount of things yeah there's a bedroom full <laughs> and lois you should be there because you know um, i was gonna say yeah. we, can, we can do it outside and have some spread out room as yeah. well oh yeah that's yeah. great and then but, but you could keep these and i'll come pick them up okay that's okay, okay. And, all the ones in the little black frames mm -hmm. are all just uh, prints. They're not the original yes. photos. Yes. So okay. if you want to take them out and copy them, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the these this one, of course, the ones that of course look older. The ones that are those are original. Yeah. So I wouldn't take them apart because probably not get them back together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the one that the, that that box that. Uh, yeah. So I I think that's. That's it, and thank you very much, oh, Greg and Judy. Thank you. Wow.